In a capitalist system, banks are the cornerstone of economic growth. They not only provide a safe place to keep money, but also supply a source of capital to start businesses or make large purchases. The services that banks provide are critical to a strong economy. For over 175 years, Evansville residents have relied on the financial security of Old National Bank. From the beginning, settlers recognized the potential of economic growth for Evansville. Because of its location on the outside of a bend in the river, Evansville possessed the perfect attributes to become a booming trade center. Vessels traveling the river would be able to easily dock at what would become the foot of Main Street. This made it very easy for steamboats to transport goods to and from the area. Evansville grew into a distribution center supporting products to the surrounding cities. Old National Bank was originally a branch bank of the State Bank of Indiana. It was brought to the Evansville area in 1834. It was conveniently located by the docks so the steamboat captains could use the bank for business. The bank also provided the security of a vault for the families who did not have any protection for their money. With money being more accessible, families and stores flourished. The first building was located in an old one-room store. We had 15 chairs, we had two candelabras, we had a safe, and we had two cuspidors. Back then they called them spittoons, but we did that for $59 to outfit that first bank that was at 20 Main Street. John Mitchell became Old National's first president. He also recognized the importance of improving the transportation system to and from Evansville. The bank invested $30,000 to the building of the Wabash Erie Canal. This would have linked Evansville to Lake Erie. Only three years after opening its doors, Old National encountered its first economic obstacle. The Panic of 1837 was one of the largest economic crises in American history. President Andrew Jackson felt that the Bank of the United States hurt the average citizen. He thought it held too much power over credit and economic opportunity. In hopes of solving this problem, Jackson made the executive decision to move funds from the Second Bank of the United States to smaller state banks. The results were devastating. The state banks had poor credit policies which caused them to fall into deep trouble. Hundreds of banks had to close. This triggered many businesses to fail and families to lose their homes. The panic also led to the closing of the Wabash Erie Canal project. Even through all this turmoil, Old National never closed its doors, serving as the pillar of strength that Evansville desperately needed. In 1838, after four years of service, John Mitchell realized the need for a larger building. The new building was constructed across the street from the original building. At the time, it was referred to as Evansville's grandest building. The two-story building cost the bank a total of $18,000. There continued to be the issue of transporting goods in and out of Evansville. With the creation of a new stone dock, the river trading was great for exchanges with the south and west, but it was not good enough for trading with the east. In 1850, Old National helped finance Evansville's first railroad, the Evansville-Crawford Line. The new railroad helped the city become more commercially significant. Evansville became a leading trade city to the west. In 1854, Old National's charter was about to expire. Charters were given to banks so they could legally operate. And banks had to change their charters every 20 years. And a name change often occurred uh, at that time as well. In order to receive a new charter, the bank would have to pay back all of its dividends when applying for the new charter, or at least prove that it could pay back all of its dividends. Old National paid back all of its dividends at that time, and all of its stockholders doubled their original investments. Around that time, Old National received their second charter. They also renamed the bank, Evansville Branch Bank of the State Bank of Indiana. Within the next year, the bank was remodeled with a new facade containing four Ionian columns and a staircase giving it the appearance of a Greek temple. 
Three years later, Old National went through its second test of stability. The Panic of 1857 was sparked by numerous factors. The failure of New York City's branch of the Ohio Life Insurance and Trust Company and a shipwreck in which 30,000 pounds of gold bound from California for Eastern Banks were lost, all contributed to the panic. These setbacks lowered the value of stocks and bonds in the United States banks. Old National Bank persevered through this crisis. The bank was given national recognition as being one of the only banks to redeem its notes in cash. They had proven yet again their strength and stability to the residents of Evansville. In 1866, Old National received their third charter, renaming it the Evansville National Bank. In 1873, another period of depression struck the United States. It began with the failure of the J. Cook & Company. This company had helped finance the Civil War and underwrote the construction of the North Pacific Railroad. The economic problems that followed were overproduction and deflation in a declining market. As a result, the silver dollar was demonetized, causing many businesses and banks to close. However, Old National did not close. They remained open for the citizens of Evansville. Through all the economic turmoil, Old National kept growing. The people of Evansville made Old National the most trusted bank in the city. With its strong record of success, the bank obtained its fourth charter in 1884 and its fifth charter 21 years later in 1905. Just before World War I, Old National needed to expand again. The board decided to move their location to a newer, modern building. In 1916, they built their new office building on Main Street between 4th and 5th Street. This was considered Evansville's first skyscraper. Although the building contained eight floors, not all were used for banking purposes. The extra space was rented out to other organizations in the community. Only a few years after World War I, Old National Bank received their permanent charter. The name of the bank officially became Old National Bank. This was not its last name change, however. It would be years until it would receive its current name, Old National Bank Corp. Near the end of the 1920s, a great economic catastrophe occurred in the United States. In the period known as the Great Depression, the stock market crashed and 40% of all the paper values of common stock were lost. America's economy ground to a halt in the years that followed. Farmers' income fell to half of what it was before the Depression, and the unemployment rate rose to nearly 25%. Old National Bank carried on through these dark, uncertain times. They once again kept their doors open for business for the struggling Evansville citizens. As Old National and the people of Evansville struggled through the Great Depression, an unbelievable period of economic growth was just around the corner. During World War II, that period of growth had arrived. The labor force was revitalized due to wartime production. Many people found good paying jobs in support of the war effort. They went to work at the shipyards building LSTs, on Highway 41 building P-47 airplanes, and other factories producing wartime goods. One of the biggest activities the bank had as far as volume was selling the uh, Series E savings bonds and taking all care of all the book work and those things. And we used to get uh, complimentary and encouraging letters from the Treasury Department because uh, bullets and cannons and things like that cost a lot of money. With the incredible growth in the Evansville economy came new innovations at the bank. The first drive-up window was installed in 1941 to make banking more convenient for the citizens of Evansville. Old National had always been a great part of why Evansville thrived in tough economic times. Community service was an unwritten requirement for all of the employees. The bank started many organizations and had many fundraising drives. And this was uh, little dolls and also teddy bears, I think, at one time, too. So these were purchased, I'm not sure by whom, but the 
made a little contest out of the thing and gave prizes for the best dressed doll or teddy bear. And uh, they were given to the children through the Salvation Army, uh, children that would probably not get much in the way of any Christmas presents, absent something like that. In the 1950s, Old National started its expansion by opening its first branch on the north and east sides of Evansville. After this expansion, the swift growth has never ceased. Through the 1960s and 70s, Old National Bank opened eight more branches. In 1969, the bank moved into an 18-story building located at the corner of 5th Street and Main Street. This building was the tallest building in Evansville during the time. It was recognized as an Evansville landmark. In the years to follow, Old National had built and merged with other banks to open nearly 180 branches. In 2004, Old National finished up the construction of a brand new 251,000 square foot office building. Located on the corner of Riverside and Main Street, which coincidentally is the exact location of the original bank building, the building's facade is slightly curved to maximize the view of the Ohio River. The building contains a structural steel frame along with an aluminum and glass curtain wall. The base and trim are constructed from Indiana limestone. The building includes a three-story pavilion, a glass atrium named after Wayne Henning, a retired executive, and a street-level cafeteria that is open to bank employees as well as the public. In previous years, banks were required to set up separate subsidiaries in each state, and it was illegal to conduct business with clients out of their home states. Well, we were very limited in what we could do. We could only, even though we could go out outside of our area with loans and, and customer things, you know, we, could, we couldn't advertise. We couldn't get the name of our bank in places like Owensboro or Jasper or places like that. So with the change of the law, again, we were only $90 million when I started. We grew to $9 billion. And so for us to stay relegated just to the local tri-state area where there wasn't any room for us to grow in to expand our product or to give other people an opportunity to advance in the company. In previous years, banks were required to set up separate subsidiaries in each state, and it was illegal to conduct business with clients out of their home states. However, in 1984, the law was changed to allow banks to expand across state lines. Old National took advantage of this new act by mainly purchasing banks in other states. The bank has currently added branches into western Kentucky, southern Illinois, and all over Indiana. Well, over, uh, over the last, uh, basically starting in 1986, when we moved into Terre Haute, uh, uh, we made purchases uh, mainly through the three states, uh, Illinois and Kentucky, and of course in our home state of Indiana, and grew to become a major uh, Midwest bank in uh, our part of the country. And of course, we did that by acquisitions. And we did a lot of banking acquisitions, uh, um, last number I remember, it seems like it was 45, and I'm not sure of the number, but we made a lot of banking acquisitions. Even though Old National has expanded into a giant corporation, the values of the bank remain the same. Old National stands to serve the community and build lasting relationships with each and every one of its clients. Well, that's the way you get to be 175 years old, because you don't, the bank doesn't do any better than its customers do. So it's our best interest to be as much help to them as we can. Just as it was in 1834, Old National Bank remains a pillar of strength for the citizens of Evansville.